Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. Uh, this video module is going to be on the impact of excise taxes on the price of the good that is taxed and on the quantity produced and consumed. Uh, we will try to explain why producers are, are often opposed to excise taxes being imposed on their goods. We can use uh, in this discussion the supply and demand curve framework that we uh, developed in a previous uh, video uh, module. Uh, that framework looks like this with the price on the vertical axis and the quantity of the good on the uh, horizontal uh, axis. We can actually specify now that the good is gasoline. Since gasoline is a good that is typically uh, uh, taxed uh, quite heavily in, in most uh, countries. Cigarettes are also taxed. And by the way, an excise tax is nothing more than a tax on a particular good like uh, gasoline or cigarettes or uh, liquor. If we impose a, a fixed excise tax on this good, then that means that the producers are going to need to have a higher price. Each point on this supply curve represents the minimum price that producers must have in order to offer the various quantities of the good. That means that in order to offer a quantity of Q2, uh, producers must have a price uh, equal to this level here. Uh, P2. If you impose a, a tax on this good, then in order for the producers to offer Q2, they must have their minimal price, plus they must have uh, the excise tax, which let us say is this amount. If we impose the same tax on every unit uh, sold, then basically uh, there is another price that producers need here for this quantity uh, here. That will also be the vertical distance here will also be uh, the tax. We can impose the tax at, at every point, and if we do, we get an upward and leftward uh, shift uh, in the supply curve. This, of course, means that the supply curve uh, decreases with, again, the vertical distance uh, equal to the size of the tax. Uh, in this case, the tax is equal to vertical distance AB, which is equal to the vertical distance uh, CD. Uh, now, if the producers uh, try to um, uh, pass the tax along at the initial equilibrium, that is, they're selling initially at price P1, quantity uh, Q1, then they would try to charge a price uh, equal to P3. Uh, but in doing that, uh, they will create a surplus equal to this amount. The reason we have a surplus is that the quantity supplied that producers are willing to offer is Q1. The quantity demanded is now going to be equal to uh, Q3. Uh, now the, that means that the price is going to start falling and when it does the amount produced is going to contract. The quantity demanded is going to expand until we reach uh, this point here. And I'll just assume that P2 is the equilibrium price just to keep the number of lines uh, down. So you have a price equal to P2. You have a quantity uh, bought and sold which is going to be equal to uh, Q4. Uh, so the net effect of this excise tax is to reduce uh, output, reduce consumption, and the net effect is to raise uh, the price. But notice that the increase in price from P1 to P2 is not equal to the vertical distance CD or AB, uh, which is equal to the tax. This means, of course, uh, that the producers are going to have to suffer a part of this uh, tax. They're able to charge a price of P2, but then they must pay the government an amount equal to the tax per unit sold, which means if you deduct out the tax, this vertical distance here, from the price of P2, you get an after-tax price that the producers receive of equal to P sub P. Net effect is quantity uh, demanded and produced goes down, the price of the good to consumers goes up, and the price received by producers uh, goes uh, down. Now that, of course, means that producers would be opposed, would be willing to oppose uh, excise taxes and would be willing to spend some amount of money to try to uh, thwart the passage of excise taxes or to try to uh, reduce them. Uh, how much of the tax they can pass on depends very definitely upon uh, 
the shape of this uh, demand curve, or what we will later call the elasticity of the demand. Uh, this demand curve reflects the consumer responsiveness. The more unresponsive consumers are to uh, the tax, the less uh, consumption will be affected, the price will go up all the more. To show that, we can take a graph that looks uh, like this, where we have a, what we call a highly inelastic uh, demand curve, almost vertical uh, demand curve. If we impose this excise tax on, on this good, uh, note what is, what is true. That is, the price goes from P1 uh, to P2. And uh, this means that the increase in the price is very close to the, to the tax, which is equal to this vertical distance here or this vertical distance uh, there. The price to consumers goes up. The price that producers receive after the tax uh, goes uh, down, but not very much. In this case, uh, the consumers bear a, a large percentage of, of, of the tax. This means, of course, uh, that uh, producers who face um, uh, inelastic demands would have less reason to oppose um, uh, excise taxes and producers who, who face uh, elastic demands or demands under which consumers are highly uh, responsive. Now it stands the reason that producers may not like a tax on their own product regardless of the elasticity of demand, uh, but they would love to have a tax on their uh, competitors' products. Why? Because such a tax will raise the price of the competitors' goods and that increase in the price of the competitors' goods can increase the demand for the good uh, in question. That means that the producers who are able to get a tax on their competitors' products uh, can raise their price and they can also sell a larger uh, quantity. Uh, thank you very much.